Hey everybody, welcome to my little secret hideaway. This is where I've been keeping most of the containers that I planted up for videos. And today I'm going to do a little walkthrough and do a bit of maintenance on all of these different containers and show you exactly what I do. If these plants are high maintenance, they don't stay. So all of these are pretty easy. I'm going to show you just how easy they are. So let's take a closer look. So in this pot, there's not too much to do. I will break off some of these geraniums. There's still plenty of life in those left, but usually on my cleaning day, I do anything that's even close to being done, uh, just because that way, you know, I don't have to worry about it for another week or two. And you can see already how much this lobelia has been improving. Let me turn it here. So you can see we're getting a lot of flower on that. Uh, I don't really have to do anything right now with the uh, salvia because that's just looking real good. I may at some point go in and give it a trim back at different spots. You can see, I don't know if you can tell, it's been trimmed and nipped before. So for this one, sometimes I'll just kind of pull off the spent blooms on the canna. I do kind of like the seed pods that show up on these. They start getting really big. Plus there's still more blooming here and there's another bloom here. So I could very easily cut, cut it right here, but uh, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to keep enjoying it. And then I just clean up little bits that kind of fall because I don't want those all over the place. Otherwise, the lantana right now doesn't need any kind of attention. The petunias, they are some, there are some spent blooms on there. Those are going to dry up. And one, if these were outside, they would just blow away. So that's pretty good. So I'm just going to do a quick cleanup. There's not much to do on these. And then usually I just let the cannas, um, I just let the blossoms fall on their own. I actually don't do this kind of plucking kind of action, a little too much work. Plus it gets a little messy. For this one, there's not much to do. However, I am looking at this Angelonia, and this is almost done, so I'll probably cut this one off. One thing that's important to note is that when I move around through here, I will go through and sanitize my snips. So don't want to get any of this. I'm just using alcohol, uh, and I don't want to get any of that on the blooms. So these, I just follow down, snip it off. Let's see, is there another one? A lot of them are getting close, so I will be doing a little bit more trimming on these. By trimming them off, I'm going to encourage these new ones that are down below to start coming forward. I don't really have to do anything with the Calibricoa. The begonias, if there's a spent bloom, then I will do something. And I got to tell you, somebody in the comments suggested using the Superbina Cherry Burst with this. And I love that idea so much that I am going to take out one of these Cabaret Strawberry Parfaits and just swap it out. So one side will be different than the other. I just thought it was such a great idea. This is a perfect plant for this. So I'm going to do that right now. Now these here are the plants that I got from QVC. And since I transplanted them, some of the original leaves are in a little bit rough shape. So I'm going to snip some of the worst ones off and just make way for the new ones. Now, if I look at this, it looks like this got a little bit of sun scorch. So chances are in the greenhouse they had it in, it was probably under a little bit of a shade cloth, just protecting a little. So this is fine. Um, eventually this leaf will disappear. I'm gonna let some new uh, growth show up first. And then I'm just gonna go through the rest of them, kind of do the same thing. I am getting some new growth coming from every single one of them, as far as I can tell. So that's really good news. Okay, so this one is beautiful, but this salvia is getting enormous. And so I think what I'm gonna to try to do is just trim back a little bit of this one so that this Amazonas plum cockatoo uh, petunia will have a little bit more of a chance. So I'm just gonna take back a couple of these. I'm not sure how far I wanna go, but I think this might kind of help out this petunia. You know, I'm taking out a quite a bit here. Mm. And this is a variety of salvia that will bounce back, so I'm not too worried about it. And let's see. Yeah, I mean, we're going to give this a go and see what happens. There are some of these spent uh, stems, too, that I can remove. So yeah, that, that should do better. Hopefully this uh, plum cockatoo will have a chance to kind of fill in this area now. Now I should note that there has been absolutely no trimming, no care done on these since I planted them. Um, for these here, I'm going to just kind of pull the petunia out from inside the uh, coleus. I do like how it looks when the flowers are popping through the coleus, but sometimes the petunias, the branches get a little heavy and then it starts weighing down on the coleus. So I, I just don't want to do that. So otherwise this looks really good. For this one, I have been taming the petunias a little bit to keep them away from this uh, angel wing senesio because I want to give this just that little bit of extra space 
um, so that it can reach its maximum potential. Let's see here. What do I have going on? Yeah. And you can see the petunias, uh, they recover pretty well. So this is giving this Senecio the energy or the space to be able to do what it needs to do. One thing I will say is that on this one, there are too many plants in here to be realistic. Now we're not having trouble keeping it water, so that's fine. But there is one Supertunia uh, Hoopla Vivid Orchid and two of the Supertunia Mini Vista uh, White. And the reason why I say there's too many, I, sh I shouldn't say that. There's This is a beautiful amount, it looks great. But when we look at this Hoopla Vivid uh, Orchid, but if we just come right over here and we look at this Hoopla Vivid Orchid, I mean, you think, okay, sorry, let me adjust that. Okay, so how many Hoopla Vivid Orchids do you think are in that one? And the truth is, there is only one plant in that one. So, one plant in a similarly sized pot, look at how big it gets when it has the extra space. This plant is absolutely incredibly huge, and I have it planted with my elephant ears, and it looks like the elephant ear is just starting to come up, and the same thing's happening over here. That's some of the lemon coral sedum, and then that's an elephant ear. Remember, I had just put the lemon coral sedum and the hoopla vivid orchid on those or in those just in case I didn't have good luck. And then also there is my uh, canna that I had gotten. I'm going to pot that up into something bigger because it's just growing right along the side of the pot there. So let's do that right away. So for this one, I just popped in my pot into that container, and now I'm just going to flip it up and then pop it in so that it's as close to centered as possible. Presto, all done. So you can see this dahlia is doing absolutely fantastic, but when I turn the pot, you'll notice that it is leaning a lot. And that can happen sometimes with the dahlias where uh, the stem just gets a little kind of lopsided and it isn't able to support itself. So what I usually do is I will try to get a stake in there. So. I get it kind of into position, and then I will place the stake kind of down the center. Now, sometimes you have to tie it into place. Other times it holds its own and doesn't need it. So that actually got it right on the first try. That's kind of incredible. But I'm going to put two of them in here, and then I'm going to keep an eye on it for a little while. So sometimes you have to go in and you do have to like strap it to the stake. Other times you don't. Now, I can go back in later and I can just cut this bamboo to whatever height I want. That way it's not so visible. And then it ends up being, you know, just what I wanted. So you can see, this is kind of more of how it's supposed to look. So you can see, and I, I'm surprised, I haven't really had to clean this dahlia at all. It's doing really well, considering I haven't done anything with it. So, but there are some spent flowers on here, so I probably should get some of these off, but they still look good. So I'm just gonna leave them. That's what I'm gonna do. But wow, look at that. So for this one, I'm going to clean up this geranium. Looks like it only has two stems that really need to be removed. Let's see. There we go. And everything else on it looks pretty good. Now, because there's no wind, some of the times the uh, petunias don't lose their, uh, their uh, petals quite as easily. Now, this here, if we look over here, sorry, I'll move this over. You'll notice that this coleus is starting to flower. I don't usually like my coleus to flower, so I could pinch it off here, but I think I'm going to pinch it off a little farther back because I would like to see it branch a little bit more. So we're going to just pull it off there. Um, I'm guessing, yep, there's starting to be a flower here. And I'll just, actually, I'm just going to do that on all of them. And that way it's going to just fill out a little bit more and everything should be very, very good. Everything else in this pot looks like it's fine. I can kind of tease out some of these petals, but like the petunia is fine, and the nemesia, or nemesia is doing just fine. Now, one thing that happened with this color rush petunia is that after I planted it, it kind of went into two different directions. Now, I could trim this back and try to encourage more growth, but I think I'm going to just leave it, and hopefully, because there's this opening where the sun's going to be able to hit it, that we're going to get some more growth, and that's just going to encourage it to look like, you know, one big pillow. But it's going to take a little while for this to fill in, so hopefully that works. It's a, my plan anyway. Now this is that drop-in that I had gotten at one of the hardware stores and I was going to just see how it did so I trimmed it way back. It is starting to come back. We're seeing a lot of new growth. It's filling in pretty nice. Uh, I'm not sure that this soil is doing much here. It's kind of spongy but I just keep giving it fertilizer and they are growing. I'm tempted to plant this up into a bigger pot but because I am seeing all this new growth maybe I'll just 
uh, stay the course and just see how how good I could get it to look in this pot. We'll wait and see what it what it does down the road. So this is one of the baskets I had gotten over at Mother's Day. They're wave petunias and these look really good. I have not done anything with them and you can see the salmon one is starting to catch up with that more purple one. So I could trim this salmon one back to kind of force it to be closer in size, but I don't think I need to. I'm going to just wait. I think this one's going to start growing pretty soon. So these I'm very happy with. It, it's kind of nice to see how well they're doing. And I have some other ones here. So this one I have done nothing with. I have not cleaned it. I have not done anything but water and fertilize it. <laughs> it's just incredible. So now we're starting to see the lantana is starting to trail a little bit and starting to kind of work its way into the calabrocoas. Uh, I could try to train it downward a little bit more, but I don't think I'm going to do that. And this is a sterile variety of lantana, so you don't necessarily have to trim any of these deadheaded parts off, but it does get kind of a berry type of thing here. Uh, that you could trim off if you wanted to. Uh, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't. So uh, otherwise, zero maintenance on this one so far, and it's one of the nicest ones, I gotta say. Same story on this one. This is the one I had bought from Proven Winners Direct. It's growing really well. I do have where it's not really growing on this side, so I'm making sure when I hang it that this side faces the sun. Hopefully it'll fill in this area. Uh, we're still a little ways away from it covering the pot, but uh, considering you know these were small plants when I got them, I'm happy to see that they're doing as well as they are. Let's see, I'll show you a couple other ones here. So this one's doing pretty well. Looks like I need to get some iron in this pot just because these are looking a little yellow, but the Biden is doing well, the uh, Lismachia is doing fine, the Calabricoa is doing fine. So this is the one I didn't know how exactly it was gonna grow and how it was gonna look, but it's an unusual color scheme for me. I haven't really done these colors before, but I'm kind of liking it because it's so different from anything I've done. So uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on this one. So these two are my purple wave petunia baskets and they were getting very leggy and not looking very good. So I was, went about remedying that two different ways. So on this one, I had trimmed them back right to the edge of the pot and I've been giving them a lot of fertilizer. So pretty much every other day they're getting fertilizer. And if you look, I'm getting excellent growth in here. There's tons of new like buds and leaves in here, lots of flowers coming and it's you know getting a nice habit as well. Um, I still have a little bit of a hole in the middle, but it's filling in quite nicely. So I'm, I'm really happy about that. And you can see there's already some new flowers that have already opened. So it's gonna be, full of color very soon and then it's going to take a little while still before it starts covering the pot. Meanwhile on this other one what I had done is I decided I'm just going to go full guns with fertilizer. So pretty much again every other day uh, I'm making sure that I'm giving it fertilizer and the good news is is I do have some new growth inside. This was very barren on the inside before and so I see a lot of new growth there and there's also a lot of new growth happening along these branches. So it'll be interesting to see how this one fills out. So it is nice to be able to still have this color out there while it's kind of being remedied. Uh, but I'm kind of wondering, will the habit be more consistent on this one? This one still might be a little a little kind of lumpy bumpy, but uh, this this is nice to be able to, you know, if you don't have a place to hide it uh, while it uh, goes, while it's infirmed, we'll say, uh, it, it's nice to be able to at least have some blooms out there for a little while. So. I'll let you know how this experiment goes. Big problem with these right now is that these 12 inch pots and they're a little bit shallow 12 inch pots, they're not holding enough water to be able to only water them once a day. We are having to give them water most days twice. And that's a bit of a problem because I know myself well enough that if I have to water it twice a day, there's a chance that at some point I'm gonna miss one of those waterings. And if that happens, then the plants start to struggle. So I'm tempted to bump these up to a little bit bigger pot. I think it's gonna just make my life easier and the plants are gonna be a lot happier and healthier. So I'm gonna wait a week and decide next week what I'm gonna do. I think I am gonna have to because if they're already having a hard time keeping enough water, well, it's only gonna get worse as the season goes on and the plant gets even bigger and bigger and bigger. So we'll see, see what happens, but I'm kind of predicting the future here. These are gonna be in bigger pots probably next week. So let's talk about this one here because it's doing very, very well, especially considering it had arrived in this pot here, which is like less than 10 inches. Sad, sad story because these petunias would have never survived this long in this tiny, tiny pot. I'm so glad I went super large with it because you can see it's just growing and expanding. And it's a nice one because you, know, you can see that's one of the nice things about some of the super petunias is that they 
keep that nice, beautiful habit going right, you know, over the whole thing. And these will just keep going. And I have done nothing. There has not been a single trim on this. There has not been anything except fertilizer on this. So no deadheading, nothing at all. It's just like keeping this habit just on its own. So Wow, this is fantastic. I'm so glad I put it in the giant pot. I'm so glad that it's doing well too. And I can't wait for it to just start growing and covering this pot because we are going to have a giant kind of color ball out of this one. So this one ended up, I mean, this was in, you know, not great shape when I got it and it wasn't gonna make it. And now it's on its way to being like fantastic. I am very excited about this passion vine. It is getting ready to bloom and there's so many buds on this thing. It's incredible. A couple lessons learned and a lot of you in the comments said, man, if you're going to use a trellis or whatever, whenever you can, put it in the pot before you plant it. And so this metal thing, I tried to put it in after I planted a little bit of a challenge. I also had left this little mini trellis on here. I was too afraid to disturb it. And I'm realizing like, I don't like how it looks. So I'm going to try to get rid of it by cutting it into little pieces um, and see, you know, that way I can rearrange these a little bit. I'm going to just try to do it without breaking any of the branches. So we'll get this one out. That was successful so far. So now, and that's all I'm doing is just kind of going down the line. So that way I can take off each rung separately. Okay. And then the last one, let's come from the other side. These little ones that have kind of now been released. I think I'm going to try just bringing them down and around. I don't have a lot going on on this side, so let's just see if I can weave them in a little bit differently. And see, what I like to do with these is then, like this one has reached the top and I'll just start trying to train it to go back down. At least that's how I do it with other vines, so we'll see how this one works. I'm sure it operates similarly. I'm just so excited to see what this flower is going to look like. It's very, very taunting because it's looked like this for a long time and then like this for a long time and then this and then this. It just takes a long time for those buds to open, but I know it's going to be worth it. So now I am going to go through and make sure I pick up all my debris because I don't want to leave any of that out because if there's any pests or disease, that's just going to encourage those problems to amplify. So we want to get rid of any kind of mess that we have. Also, we have been getting people calling us. Uh, a lot of people are finding aphids and different bugs on their plants. I think bugs are going to be pretty heavy this year because we had such a mild winter. So keep an eye out for those types of things and then decide what way you're going to treat them. If you're going to just leave them, if you're going to let the birds and other bugs get them, or if you're going to spray for them, uh, really think about that. Just remember, it's important that you identify the pest before you just start randomly spraying because you don't want to spray, you know, something that isn't going to work on whatever you're having. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, I hope this gives you a little idea of how I go about with my maintenance. I usually do this every, I'm going to say, 10 to 14 days or so I'll do with my snips in hand. Otherwise, while I'm watering, I might fuss a little bit, but for the most part, I don't. And I definitely have a policy that if a plant is just giving me a headache or it needs more attention to that than that, forget about it. I'm not going to grow it. It's just not my style. So that's why I like things that are self-cleaning or things that just need occasional deadheading. I do get a little annoyed sometimes with like salvia and wax begonias because they do shed their flowers quite a bit. And so that leaves a little mess on the deck or on the sidewalk that can be, you know, bug me a little bit, but I like them enough that I, I still keep them. And so I'm willing to put up with that. Otherwise, um, I think that's, that's kind of a, a pretty big overview. I covered all kinds of stuff. I hope uh, that the information is useful to you and uh, Hey, I'll see you guys all in the next video. Thanks for watching.